I borrowed up to my eyeballs and I had a lot of short-term notes because I was doing Flip This House before there was cable TV to tell you how. Dave Ramsey began building a multi-million dollar real estate business in his early 20s, a business that would be gone before he turned 30. The short version of the story is that the banks got sold to another bank and looked down and said, there's a kid 26 years old, owes us millions of dollars, let's limit this relationship, and which is banker talk for ruin his life. They called our notes and we spent the next two and a half years of our life losing everything we owned. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing bad. Today, Dave Ramsey is known for sharing financial advice that's biblically based. He's a best-selling author, a popular speaker, and host of a national radio program. Dave is also our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. Dave Ramsey is not the only one talking about financial things on this episode. Billy Graham will have something to say about Christmas spending here in America, we've been commercializing Christmas to such an extent that many people have forgotten all about the Christ of Christmas. You'll hear more of Billy Graham's comments right after Dave Ramsey shares his story. But you don't have to wait to learn more about the Christ of Christmas and how he can change your life. We can tell you all about Jesus at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. GPS. God. People. Stories. I didn't grow up in church and didn't grow up walking in faith. And so after my wife and I got married, she announced one morning that we were going to church. And I said, uh, we aren't doing anything. It's Sunday. I'll be watching football and drinking beer because uh, that's what I do on Sunday. So Dave didn't learn a lot about Christianity while growing up, but he did learn a lot about real estate. His parents owned a residential real estate company. And so we were always going to, you know, motivational seminars and goal setting and Zig Ziglar and Earl Nightingale and Paul Harvey and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I, I was always hearing the, the success formulas, and, and that's what I was a student of. Financial success was a lot more important to Dave than was spiritual success. But it was at one of those motivational type seminars that Dave would discover his need for Jesus Christ. It happened after he was married. The guy at the sales conference said, uh, you know, here's how you win at business. And he walked us through everything. And we, he had great credibility by the time he was finished talking because he was who we wanted to be at 22 years old, me and this redneck buddy of mine that were there. And and he said, and you need to know God if you're going to win in business, because if you don't know Jesus, then you're not going to value people. And people in business who don't value people uh, struggle in business because they, they see everything as a transaction. And so he and I went back to the hotel room and got the Gideon's Bible out of the nightstand at the Holiday Inn, which was completely useless to us because it was old King James. And so Shakespeare and Jesus, I mean, we didn't have a chance. <laughs> When he got home from the conference, Dave said to his wife, Sharon, we're going to church. And she said, who are you and what have you done with my husband? And uh, we wandered into the back door of this little church of about 400 people. And that pastor and his wife, long story short, led me to the Lord a few months later in my early 20s. And I don't want to gain this world, but lose what matters. So I'm giving up everything because. I want to be different. I want to be changed. After Dave made that decision to surrender his heart to Jesus, he dove into getting to know Jesus. I do everything with great intensity and great focus, and that includes meeting Jesus and includes getting to know him and his word. And so, uh, you know, I spent the decade of my 20s uh, completely immersed in Scripture, taking every class I could get anywhere to learn the Bible because I didn't know anything. The preacher would be preaching and saying, you know, when they threw Joseph in the hole, and I'm like, nope, don't know Joseph, don't know the hole. At about the same time he started his intense study of the Bible, Dave also began buying and selling real estate. And... I got rich, at least by a kid from Antioch, Tennessee standards. I ended up with about $4 million worth of real estate. And at 25 years old, I had a million dollar net worth. I was making $250,000 a year. And this is in the early 80s, so that was a lot of money. But I did a lot of dumb stuff, stupid stuff. I, I borrowed up to my eyeballs. And I had a lot of short-term notes because I was doing Flip This House before there was cable TV to tell you how. And so we 
the short version of the story is that the banks got sold to another bank and looked down and said, there's a kid 26 years old, owes us millions of dollars, let's limit this relationship, and which is banker talk for ruin his life. They called our notes, and we spent the next two and a half years of our life losing everything we owned. We were mm-hmm. sued and foreclosed on, and finally with a brand new baby and a toddler and a marriage hanging on by a thread, we were bankrupt. Something Dave is fond of saying about that season of life is, I met God on the way up, I got to know him on the way down. That amount of sheer terror in every aspect of your life will uh, either drive you away from the gospel or drive you so deep into it you will never let go. And that's what I did. I just dove at the feet of the throne and grabbed, you know, around Jesus' ankles and held on. And uh, he, he walked us through that stuff. And But we learned the word. I mean, we learned, the, uh, we learned a different kind of faith that you do not get unless you're in the furnace. What will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? Dave and his family were in the hottest heat of that furnace for about two and a half years. I mean, I was a 26-year-old kid. I had no idea what I was doing, and, and, and I didn't know how to be married. I didn't know how to be a daddy. I was a brand-new believer. And uh, so I'm still I'm trying to learn how to do all these things at one time, and in the midst of it, can't keep the water turned on at the house. And the stuff's being foreclosed on, and we're being sued, and they're scarfing money out of accounts, and it was just brutal. So the business, you know... It, We fought it and fought it and fought it and fought it. We almost made it out, but not quite at the end there. Somewhere in the midst of the furnace, Dave got hold of the biblical promise that God has a plan for each of us, including him. The classic, you know, Jeremiah 29, that that God has a plan for me. My Heavenly Father, in spite of all of this, is crazy about me. And it's not to bring me harm, but to bring me hope. And I couldn't see hope in the middle of all of that. But I couldn't see not having hope. Whatever hope Dave and Sharon had was both strengthened and put to the test by the roller coaster ride that was their life for about two and a half years. One minute, they'd be experiencing an unexplainable peace. The next minute, they'd be rattled by a phone call with more bad news. I remember in August, we filed bankruptcy in September of 88. And in August of 88, I've marked it in my Bible. I was reading about four o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep. And I have Romans 5, rejoice in your suffering. And I looked up at God and I said, right, sure, I'll do that. (laughs) Not. (laughs) And, uh, you know, because suffering produces perseverance. Oh, okay. And perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope, well, that's a gift of the Spirit. And, you know, I just started walking in that scripture going, okay, I got this. You got this, I got this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I just started bathing in that in, in my weakness, he's made strong. There's never been a moment I was not held inside your arms. And there's never been a day when you were not who you say you are. You're forever, it don't matter what I'm walking through. Cause no matter. The Ramsey's life slowly turned around, and Dave started taking classes at his church from Christian financial counselors like Larry Burkett and Ron Blue. Then the pastor called me one day and said there was a guy in his office in a foreclosure, and he said, can you sit down with him? I know you used to buy foreclosures, and then I know you were one. (laughs) So I sat down with the guy and actually called the mortgage company and worked out a deal and kept him from losing his house. And well, from there on, a financial ministry was born at that church where I'm sitting down with couples and individuals showing them how to do a budget and how to negotiate out of their credit card debt, how to work their way out. And so it was a natural place for my my academic training and my horrible experience that I'd gone through to come together and create a ministry. And it, it just blew up. I started teaching a little Sunday school class. There were 10 people. And by the time I finished teaching it a few years later, there were 500 in there. Dave's teaching on finances remains very popular today, whether it's through his books, speaking engagements, his radio show, or his Financial Peace University training series. 
Dave's teaching is all based on biblical principles. And Dave says there's no shortage of biblical guidance on finances. There's 2,500 plus scriptures dealing with money and possessions. Jesus talked more about money than he did about love or grace, which is kind of weird if you think about it. So there must be something going on in the spiritual when it comes to money. And, and I think it is, it is our greatest opportunity to be a blessing. We know that we're blessed so that we can be a blessing like Father Abraham. And I think it's also our greatest opportunity for spiritual problems. It is the quickest way to worship idols. Materialism, if you want to call it that. I'm not against stuff. I got some nice stuff. I want you to get some nice stuff. I just don't want your nice stuff to get you. And you need to understand you don't own anything. You're just managing it for God. And I think God is so concerned that this stuff not get between us and him that he teaches us a whole lot of positive things about stuff and a whole lot of warnings about wealth and a lot of warnings about stuff. A lot of what the Bible teaches about stuff, Dave says, is the importance of contentment. Contentment may be the most powerful financial principle in Scripture. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And if you're content, you can save money. If you're content, you can increase your generosity. If you're content, you can avoid debt. It's very difficult to be content when you're not grateful. And if you'll just stop and say, thank you, Lord. If you'll stop and say, wow, I am blessed beyond my wildest imagination. The next thing that happens in your spirit automatically is contentment. One of the ways Dave encourages people who are going through a tough financial time, or really any kind of tough time, is reminding them that life is not a snapshot. It's a film strip. You're going to know things about God and, and have a different level of faith tomorrow than you had today. And it's, it's never a fixed situation. It's never linear. It, there's always a fluid dynamic flow to it. And, and it's, once I get that in my head, then that gives me hope because in the middle of the soup, if you think you're going to stay in the soup, there's no reason to have hope, but you're not going to get out. You're not going to be in the soup forever. And you're going to learn things while you're in the soup that are going to make you never go back and uh, will change your trajectory in a positive way. And so nothing is wasted in God's economy. Don't say yourself short, try and live in the moment. Fireworks come and go. And when it all fades away like seasons, do tell me what will you have to show? Cause you are not some cosmic accident. You are wonderfully made. And his intention for inviting you is so you could live this way. Dave Ramsey said nothing is wasted in God's economy. That means God will use every situation in your life to shape you into the person he wants you to be. And who he wants you to be more than anything else is a follower of Jesus Christ. Why is that? Because God loves you. And when you're a follower of Jesus, then you can be in a personal relationship with him. We can tell you a lot more at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. So Christmas is just around the corner and it will probably be no surprise to you that Dave Ramsey has a thing or two to say about spending at this time of year. You'll hear what he has to say in just a minute. We gotta shine, shine, shine like the stars in the sky. And we gotta live, live, live like we're willing to die. And we gotta open up and love enough to show that we are more than meets the eye. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Here in America, we've been commercializing Christmas to such an extent that many people have forgotten all about the Christ of Christmas. Billy Graham. And as I saw the holiday crowds rushing from store to store to get last minute presents, I could not help wondering if we hadn't lost something of the real meaning of Christmas. They have forgotten that it is the celebration of the birthday of Jesus Christ. One of the greatest sermons ever preached was delivered on that occasion of the greatest historic event of all time. This sermon was preached by the angel on the night of Christ's birth. That first Christmas service was conducted not in a temple or a cathedral or synagogue, but in the great out of doors, out in the fields. 
The tidings of Christ's birth echoed from the skies. The angel of the Lord proclaimed the good news to the lowly shepherds. The shepherds, though poor and possibly illiterate, could discern the voice from heaven above the noisy din of earth's confusion. Down in your heart you can receive this Christ of Christmas and he can bring the joy and the thrill and the glory such as you have never known if you will give your life to him. Billy Graham, he is in his 100th year of life, and he's preached a lot of Christmas sermons in that time, like the one in 1959 that you just heard excerpts from. You can listen to the rest of that message by going to the Billy Graham Audio Archives. It's at BillyGrahamRadio.org. When you get there, you'll find more than 1,600 messages there, including quite a few Christmas messages, and you can listen to all of them for free. You don't even need to register. Again, it's the Billy Graham Audio Archives at our website, billygrahamradio.org. So with Christmas just around the corner, we asked our guest, financial counselor Dave Ramsey, about spending at this time of year. When you're thinking about Christmas, our first rule of everything when it comes to money is the borrower is slave to the lender. And this idea that you borrow money to buy things that you don't really need to impress people that you don't even really like is absurd. I mean, it's a really uniquely American experience. And it has nothing to do with the scriptural walk of the walking out Christmas. Yeah, you ought to be generous and you need to enjoy Christmas and have fun giving gifts. I'm a big giver. I love giving gifts. I got grandbabies. I mean, it's a wonderful time of year. This is a good time. We love it. But, you know, if you send a message to your family that stuff is going to make you happy, you really sent them a, a message that doesn't line up with the word, and it's not going to turn out to be true for them either. So it gets some stuff. Stuff's fine, but don't set up a spiritual environment where stuff gets you. We appreciate Dave Ramsey sharing his insights and the story of how God has worked in his life. Maybe you know somebody who could benefit from hearing this episode of GPS. You can tell them about it in person or share it on social media. And if you don't mind throwing in a comment or two when you're on social media, we'd consider that a pretty nice Christmas gift. Actually, even if you don't do that, we have already been blessed with a pretty nice gift, and that is your listenership. Thank you very much. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. This is GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. My church has been